we're going to do is this one and I'm going to then reflect the birds down the bottom again all I've done here is reflected that sky down but I do want some more texturing of the grasses in there so it'll be a composite between the two I have my series of uh, acrylic brushes I'm going to use mainly the filberts and my homemade stay wet palette and mixing palette ready to go now looking at this picture I would say that we can get away with quite a bit of uh, ultramarine a little bit of black and a touch of either purple or uh, rose so we're just going to paint in, quickly as we can, a couple of coats of grey onto this. And I'm going to make that grey by mixing my white with Prussian. Add a little bit of rose into that. I'll start to get quite a nice soft blue-grey colour, which we can use up in the sky. I want to cover this canvas up. In fact, I'll have a little bit of purple now. Added a little bit of burnt sienna into it now as well. I should think this painting will be completed almost entirely in the acrylics. I can't see any reason why I would need to come on with the oils into this painting. I want to get all this blending done before it has a chance to dry. Unlike the oils, the uh, acrylics dry very, very quickly. It means I've got to get this colour on and then work into it. Not pink are coming up there. This was an early morning photograph that we just set off on our trip back from uh, Nudadale. So this early morning sunlit, sunrise, rainy sky, just a yellow ochre tint along the horizon here. And we'll come up to this very light colour with the same colour but with a lot more light in it, a lot more white in it. To get rid of the canvas at the moment. Now, a little bit of the rose into that, and we'll start to feel the rose coming back into this little sky here. And use my brush strokes now as the paint starts to dry to, to drag out this fluffy effect of the clouds. And let's start to add the lighter colour in here. Just feathering and softening it in the edges will straighten it up again in a minute. There's something that's not quite so easy to do with acrylics. It's easier, in fact, I think, with oils to, to blend. I'm using a nice big three-quarter inch filbert, as you can see. Often the rule is to start with the <clears throat> big brushes and work down to your smaller ones. And 
by just blending and modelling these strokes where you can get the feeling of these clouds up here. So I'm going to go slightly darker. I'm going to add some cobalt now and a bit of well, say I'm out of that to make a slightly warmer grey up here. Let's start to work that in now. So cobalt and a little touch of burnt sienna to give myself a slightly warmer grey. Just subtly, very subtly bring up these mixtures of greys. The simplest way, as I say, to make a grey is to use a brown or blue. I think these feelings are very light clouds, catching the first light, just blending through here. And when it's a fraction drier, I'm going to put a little bit more light back in and just let this light shine between the clouds just a little bit more. So it's quite surprising how many colours there are in there, isn't it? So we'll say bring in the light colour in a moment. Just let that blend in too. There we go. Now while I've got the colour on my brush, we want to be slightly greenier, um, more cerulean tint back here. It's a bit grey yet. There we go. Not it too dark. Which might be yet. Just this hill coming up mistily into the background there. And we are, remember, fighting the white canvas. Until we get rid of this white canvas, we can't really tell. It shouldn't take us too long to paint this background. A very soft, misty morning. And as the paint comes across the top there, it becomes a lot bluer. So I'm going to take a bit more of my Prussian and Ultramarine, and we come in with this slightly stronger, that misty colour is actually coming right through down here in the water as well. So I'm going to need this colour down here also. The use of the brush as well as the colours. Take a bit more purple, a little touch of my blue, just deaden it a bit with the previous colour. I should be able to start looking at this bit of distant woodland here, the promontory coming out there. add it to it and we'll just darken into that a little bit here and there especially at the end useful colour pressure but use it gently I'd like a little more blue in that Take a little touch of cerulean and uh, oxymarine and just tittle in a slightly bluer green tint into the mist there. There we are. Right, now I need to make a darker colour. So again the Prussian. Just as it is with a little touch of the ultramarine to bring it back a little bluer. And a wee touch of the grey we had earlier, we should start to get a... There we go. Don't want it too dark. That's a bit too dark. It's just getting the mix just right. Right, now I want to feel those trees. I might need to go to a slightly small brush in a moment. I think this darker as these trees just come up across the horizon here. Painting first one way then the other. 
right along this horizon line, feeding these little trees and twigs sticking up here over here. They come down there quite strong, right through into here. Twigs at the top of the branches are coming in fan like shapes around. You can use the tip of the brush very nicely for these areas now. We're going to paint in our, our depth of the water. I keep saying this about painting water. Get in the the verticals. Get in the the uh, the depth of the water. The reflections. We'll build this up and build this up working the paint well into the surface. Get rid of this can white canvas. Darker still. And this time I'm going to crush him under a little touch of the bounce sienna. So it made it quite a lot darker. And we'll just darken those little bits of shadow into the trees here. I'm just letting that light colour gleam through. Here, a bit darker along the bottom edge. Actually, as I'm doing this, I'm starting to learn more about the, the photograph itself. I'm looking more closely now, and I can actually see quite a lot more happening than I realised. Let's see if we can just flick in some of these branches. I'm going to use the press just, just sideways, or just edge on, just flicking in these tiny. It's a branch, we'll go back in with a bit of light later as well. Down into the depth of the shadows there. All with one brush so far. And we'll paint some horizontals in. And then, before too long, we'll come back in with the verticals again. So look what we can do by painting verticals and horizontals. Now, those darks then come across into the water here. Turn my line of paint, my horizontal first for the, for the rushes here. Right up into there. Darker there. And again, a bit stronger. The same colour, the Prussian and the burnt sienna. Nice and strong here in the foreground. Working up our, our layers of cool and warm. And look how that warmth in that, that little extra burnt sienna just brings that forward. Right, I'm going to put the big brush down and go back to a medium sized one for a minute. I want to get my slightly lighter colours going on in the background as well. Right, now I'm on to a half inch filbert. I just want to look at these very light creams that we were doing earlier. So for, for that I'm going to take some white and a little touch of yellow ochre. I don't want to make it too yellow. So I'm going to just tint with the tiniest touch of Cerulean, which will give me a cooler white. Look how light that is. And let's just look at these little areas of light that are shining through the clouds down here. So it's the paint's almost dry now, and I'm just feathering this colour, this light in here, to get the feeling of the light shining through. 
I should come back and add a little bit of pink in a minute as well. Get this feeling of the light coming through the sky there. Through the clouds and down, right through into here. Using the canvas a little bit for texture as well. Feeling this lovely morning light. I wanted to capture this at the time. I had to. I'm going to do some water. And one of the beauties we can do with acrylic paint is we can glaze like this. Exactly the same colour, just glazing and blending it in over the top. To soften in these lights. Just soften the edges a bit. See how I'm doing that. Tickling the edges in. Letting the clouds, the light shine up and around the underneath of the surrounding darker grey clouds. little tint of the rose into that. Some water. Just want a bit more of the pinks going on. Reflecting up into a very very thin glaze if you like. Just going over the surface here to pick up these pinks. Through the whites as well in places. You see the beautiful effects we can get with these delicate colours, quite different to the paintings I've just been doing. Plenty of water on my brush. Don't want it too, uh, too light. It's a little bit more silvery with the light. So I'm using white and cerulean blue now. Just to get a little more silver light. That early morning sun just gleaming through there. And the geese against that will look rather nice. Right, having got that colour there, I need to take it down lower. So I'm going to take that pink down here, add it in below, coming through here. almost into the just a bit, so I'm trying to take a touch of the dark, just bring it down a fraction, just a little tad of that blue-grey, don't want it too bright there, just glowing across. That, again the beauty of the acrylics, we can let them dry, we can work over them, it's just understanding your paint, same with watercolour, it's understanding the paint all the time. What it'll do and what you can do with it. Verticals through these rushes, just subtly feeling those reflections. There, I'll let that dry a moment. 
Right, now I need to go back to my slightly larger brush again. I'll go back to my three quarter inch. We need to get some of these colours going on down here. Let's have a look at that. I'll take some Prussian again. A little touch of white to act as a body. A bit of purple. I shouldn't be far off. Yeah, not far off at all. Right through here. Get this covered. Lots of change in colour there. And down. Add some more white. Some more purple. Some more Prussian. And go a lot darker. So I really got to slap some colour onto here. Get right down into this. Down here. Lovely colours. Get rid of this white as soon as I can by putting colour into it. Going across with my strokes at the moment, but I'm going to also come down with those in just a moment like that to get the feeling of this water going across. More white into there. It's quite a lot lighter up here. A lot more pink going on up there in a minute as well. Just feathering in now some of these lighter colours as they're reflected in the water up here. I'll make some pink in a moment to go through this. So here's a little bit darker than that later. I don't want any white showing. Yes, it's on. Pile it on. Paint it in. Enjoy your brush strokes. Big brush. Big brush. Fill it down a bit now with water. Finish off there because I'm going to put a coat of pink across there in a moment. There we go. Now, to make this lighter colour, again, a bit of yellow ochre, white, and a bit of rose. I've got both this yellow ochre going here and the pink cinnamon. Sky above. It isn't just one grey, it isn't just black and white. There are some beautiful colours happening and we've got to find them. You see how I'm now starting to paint in some of these verticals as well as horizontals. Get the feeling of the light reflecting here. Down and through little strokes, a highlight coming through. I'll pick more of this as I go on. Get the feeling of these reeds, the light shining between them. Not too much quite yet, just, just feel the surface of the water. Straight up into that. Don't pussyfoot about. Feel the edges of those trees. Just the surface of the water a little bit there. A bit of light back here. We're going with a finer brush afterwards. Just feeling where the light is. Yeah. 
twist the brush around if you need to. Bring those lights up into the darks. Look how easy it is to make these effects, but even though I'm making the easy effects, it's not just slick and technique, it is also observation. It's looking at the photograph and it's making marks about what is there. I get a bit tired of some of these television programs where they don't observe, they just make special effects and you know all the paintings look the same. It's all about the same mountains and trees and rivers that aren't at the right perspective levels and oh, it really gets on my nerves. Perspective going on here as these bits of mist drag across the water. Overdo it, just use my finger there a bit. Right, we're going to put a lot more into this as we go on, but just lighten up in a minute. Now we'll let that dry off a bit before we come back with our, our next lights. Because I'm going to paint more light over here yet. Here this morning it's nice and dry and we can carry on with the reflections in the water before we build up the rest of the darks. Now we've painted this area, there's a little bit of light canvas showing through so I start. I shall need to start to work into that now. And we need to work up our lights again. So yellow ochre, little, little touch of yellow ochre and white. And a wee touch of the cerulean blue. Not a lot. It's a cooler blue. A wee touch of the pink. And we should be able to start to get the these light colours that are reflecting in the background here. I shall want to glaze that in with water in just a minute because it's too strong at the moment. Now then, I've just been talking about using water to glaze in. So I'm going to take some clean water from the brush. Just start to use the brush to glaze and blend this colour back in across the surface. Reflection from the cloud that is softly blending in here. Now we need to come back to the darks. I'm going to start putting these darks in. So once again it's the Prussian blue, which is our dark, and the burnt sienna, which gives it the warmth. It's quite dark here in the foreground. It's the tip of the brush to start building up these chunky bits, and I'm going to use a finer brush later. I just want to build up the very heavier, chunkier bits first. These darks really are quite strong here in the foreground. Big leaves growing. A big brush and just make the marks about the leaves. It's as simple as that. Just make the brush marks about the leaves. So you use the brush to make these leaves look. By tilting the brush one way and another. We can get these lovely reedy effects. Not much light showing down in that corner. Plenty of paint. Not just the same way, but do do change your angles. It's not penny a yard this. In other words, we don't just paint it because we've got a nice effect, we don't just paint it the same all the way everywhere. We really start to look at how these leaves work. I'm going to use a rigger brush to bring out some of the finer lines. All I want at the moment is just painting the leaves without the stems. Anything repeated makes a pattern. So we don't want to start repeating it so much that it just is a pattern. We've got to make these look like different leaves that are growing here. 
By flicking the brush upwards, look, we can start to get some of the grasses. Now it's time to start painting in some of the uh, finer details of the twigs and branches. So we'll just start to work those over here. Little tiny strokes coming out across here. the blade and brush into a slight blade. Go back to the little reeds and things that we're going to go all the way across here. I'm going to take a make a slightly more bristly brush in a minute to get these effects rather than having to paint everything in, in detail. Lots of nice long strokes. Making the brush into a blade. I've got to do is paint lots and lots and lots of these in. And that's the thing, I mean along here we've got absolutely masses and masses of these reeds crisscrossing. If you make a strong mark one way you've got to make a strong mark the other way because it's reflecting remember short marks as well as long marks. Remember to look at the marks that you're working about. It's marshy. Not too deep water with these reeds and rushes. I'm going to experiment with a, a fan because I want to get just a bit more of this effect of the branches coming off, the twigs coming off these. So I'm going to use a bit of a fan here just to crisscross some of these twig effects. It can also be quite useful I think for some of these rushes too because they're very fine rushes back here. And equally I can go back with some lights on the same brush and put some of those lights back in again too. And I just start to make this colours a little bit stronger into um, the middle of the reeds here. A little bit warmer. A bit darker in places, to show that they're a little bit thicker at these spots. So quite a lot of work again building this up. Some people just might have liked it as it was without the reeds at all. But that's your choice. I'm going to take it a bit further. Always experiment and explore. We always do another painting and leave things out again the next time round, can't we? And by this, the flick of the brush, we can get these lovely long pointy reeds coming up and grow grasses here. And now I put quite a bit more burnt sienna into it just here, just to pull these closer reeds into the foreground. So although it's a very subtle difference, there is a warmer colour there and it is pulling it forward. So I think we've almost got enough detail in that. Let's go back to some of our lighter colours now and paint some of those in between. So that's the beauty of acrylics and oils. We can paint light over dark or dark over light whenever we, we so wish. In any way round that we want. Which is just what I'm doing now, putting lights back over the darks to bring out some of my highlights. These little bits of light just reflecting through the reed there and certainly down into here. This will help to bring it more to life. So yellow ochre, white and a little touch of, of rose. Notice I'm not painting across the painting water all the time. I'm painting downwards to get these reflections. And then afterwards I'm putting in a little bit of horizontal just to bring the, the surface back here and there. So it's this crisscrossing of vertical and then horizontal, vertical and feeling the surface, feeling the depth, feeling the surface, feeling the depth. And some of these little bits of grass are going to be reflecting this sunrise because they're just damp with the dew. So we'll just flick in a little bits of highlight onto the leaves here and there. 
It's a beautiful light. So I wanted to capture it not only on film but for a painting. Some paintings you can do with just a few brush marks and they're a bit slick. Others you can't. And this is one of those that you can't. You've just got to really keep working into it until you bring it up to just where you think it's right. Take those back a little bit by rubbing them in. I'd say that we're almost there for what I want to do for this particular piece of work. Things like this can make or break a painting. I just like to break it as they are, make it. A bit more paint going on. Very subtle bits of colour, but they're very important. Because they play these warms against the cools, and that's the important thing. Right, it's a following morning, the painting's now dried, and um, rather than put these geese into this painting, I've decided to leave it as it is. It makes a nice scene in its trunk, and if I put the birds in, it'll be very busy. So what I'm going to do is a second painting, very, very similar, not quite the same, and put the geese into that so we can see the difference. And it'll be a lot busier and noisier. What I will do just to finish this painting off is to take some of the burnt sienna and add that into the darks, so my Prussian blue and burnt sienna, um, just to bring these reeds forward a little bit more at the front. So not a lot of work, just a little bit more warmth look, going into the foreground, a little bit more brown, and that will finish it off. And then we'll start a second piece, which we'll put the geese into. So you see how those browns now, even though they're very subtle, are just bringing those leaves and rushes and reeds forward that little bit, and giving us that further feeling of three dimensions rather than just being flat in this early morning light.
Now I've got the background painted, I need to start painting in the geese in silhouette. So I only need two colours again to make my dark, the Prussian blue and the burnt sienna. On two or three of the birds there's a little bit of light reflecting, so I shall leave the canvas showing through, the underneath paint showing through, and just glaze over them a little bit afterward. There's no point in my showing you painting all of these, so I'll just show them in sequence a few at a time.
And now you start to see what a different picture this actually is and uh, these birds in it. They've got the reflections in now, but I want to make them look like reflections. So I've got to come back in with a little bit of uh, light colour just over the surface to uh, try and make it look like reflections and not dark marks on it. So we'll just bring some of these lighter colours just, just through, rippling through here. Both vertically and horizontally again, as we mentioned before. We've got those, and we might need to come back a little bit more, I think, this time. On the foreground here, I'm going to take a little bit of green and just indicate some of these leaves with a little bit more, a tad more colour this time. Go in with a little bit darker in one or two of these reflections and just pick them up a, a little bit. 